are destroying our planet. It's happening, and it's happening fast. The population is expanding globally at a rapid rate, and with this, we have more waste, more energy consumption, and more crowding. Tourism is inherently one of the most environmentally destructive activities on the planet. And do you know what the most ironic thing about this is? Tourism relies on the very environment that it damages. Whether you just want to be a more sustainable, conscious traveller, or whether you are a student learning all about travel and tourism, or maybe you work in the industry and you want to take a more sustainable approach to your travel and tourism management. Whichever it is, I've got it covered in today's video, where I'm going to teach you all about what ecotourism is, why it's so important, and what the main principles of ecotourism are. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton, and I'm here to educate you more about the travel and tourism industry and help you to travel more sustainably. We've all heard of the term ecotourism, but what does it really mean? Ecotourism is an example, in most cases, of sustainable tourism. It's responsible travel to natural areas. It conserves the environment and it improves the well-being of local people. There are generally three dimensions to any ecotourism project. It's based around nature, an environmental education is provided, and it is sustainably managed. The International Ecotourism Society states that around the world, ecotourism has been hailed as a panacea, a way to fund conservation and scientific research, to protect fragile and pristine ecosystems, benefit rural communities, promote development in poor countries, enhance ecological and cultural sensitivity, instill environmental awareness and a social conscience in the travel industry, satisfy and educate the discriminating tourist, and, some claim, to build world peace. The exact origins of the concept of ecotourism are not entirely clear, but what we do know for sure is that it really started to gain some gravitas in the 1960s and the 1970s. In 1965, Hetzer was one of the first people to address the concept of ecotourism. He identified four pillars of responsible tourism. The four pillars, also referred to as principles, are minimising environmental impacts, respecting the host culture, maximising the benefits to the local community, and maximising tourist satisfaction. It was the first pillar that really gained the most attention, highlighting the notion of ecotourism. Some people argue that the term itself was coined by a Mexican environmentalist named Hector Caballos Lascurain. Lascurain used the word ecotourism to describe his travels to natural, unspoilt areas where tourists could appreciate and enjoy the natural beauty and culture. The word ecotour was formally recorded in the Oxford English Dictionary in 1973 and the term ecotourism followed in 1982. It was in the 1980s that the understanding of the term ecotourism really started to become widespread. This was the result of an increased awareness of the environmental impacts of tourism, alongside a growing dissatisfaction for mass tourism. And by the 1980s, many countries had identified ecotourism as being a way of achieving environmental conservation and economic production. At this time, many ecotourism projects were in the planning and development stage. Over the years, the popularity of ecotourism has increased significantly which is a great thing because it shows that tourists are more environmentally conscious and other tourism stakeholders for that matter. It is estimated that ecotourism represents around 15% of all tourism expenditure and this sector is growing at around 5% each year. Furthermore, this has been accelerated by the recent COVID pandemic because during this time people really started to appreciate the beauty and the nature of this world and people have developed a more conscious outlook on all things in life, including their holidays. So what does ecotourism look like? What activities can we do to be ecotourists? As a tourist, you can choose to go on an ecotourism holiday, whereby most aspects of your trip will revolve around the concept of ecotourism. Alternatively, you can go on holiday and just incorporate a few elements of ecotourism into it. So for example, you could stay in an all-inclusive hotel by the beach for part of your holiday, and you could go to an eco-lodge for part of your holiday. There are so many amazing things that you can do as an eco-tourist. Here are just a few examples. You can stay in an eco-lodge 
which is accommodation that is designed to be ecologically friendly and to have minimal damage on the environment. Eco lodges will often be in natural areas and they will encompass facilities such as composting toilets or solar panels. Camping is a great way to be an eco-tourist. You can pitch up your tent in a designated campsite or perhaps you can do some wild camping. Either way, camping has minimal impact as long as you are a responsible tourist on the natural environment. Hiking is a great way to embrace ecotourism. You can go hiking up mountains, around lakes, through natural areas, forests, jungles, etc. Bird watching is another activity that is great for ecotourism. You can go on a bird watching tour or you can do it yourself from the comfort of your hotel balcony. Safaris are a great way to observe the natural environment and the natural wildlife with minimal negative environmental impacts. And bike riding can be a really great way to not only get some exercise, but to experience the local area in an environmentally friendly way. In some destinations, they have activities that you can do that are really fun, such as zip lining through the jungle. And mountain climbing can be a fantastic way for adrenaline junkies to satisfy that desire for the new and the unfamiliar. There are a range of volunteering opportunities around the world, working with nature or wildlife or both. Wildlife spotting can be a really exciting and really interesting thing to do. And there are a range of sightseeing tours that can be encompassed within an ecotourism holiday. Ecotourism is at its very core educational. And there are many different educational tours where you can learn about the natural wildlife, the natural flora and fauna, etc. Boat trips can be a great way to be an eco-tourist. You could be on a canoe, you could be sailing, you could be in all sorts of boats. And many keen photographers love to embrace eco-tourism because there are so many great photography opportunities. You can go on horse riding trips, you can take picnics, you can go on diving or snorkeling holidays. The opportunities really are endless. Ecotourism should provide long-term benefits. Ecotourism should be designed to provide benefits to the local environment and the local community. This includes aspects such as regeneration, employment, improved social services, research, the protection of flora and fauna, the growth of species and the protection of wildlife. All of these benefits should be long-lasting, demonstrating that the ecotourism project is sustainable. At the very core of ecotourism is education. Ecotourism should educate the tourists who visit about the local area and the wildlife that resides within it. It should also educate other tourism stakeholders, including the host community, the government, NGOs and the industry as a whole. Ecotourism provides opportunity for research and development and for both locals and tourists to really gain an understanding of the biological diversity on offer. Ecotourism should promote responsibility. Ecotourism really should promote ethical and moral responsibility among all the people that are involved. This includes the tourists, the local population and other stakeholders and they should all be aware of the impacts of their actions and act responsibly. Ecotourism should minimise the negative impacts associated with tourism. The negative impacts of tourism should always be minimised. This includes environmental aspects such as littering, erosion, the displacement of animals, trampling of the ground and pollution. It also includes social impacts such as globalisation, cultural erosion and enhancing disparities. Ecotourism should demonstrate strong leadership and management. This includes the management of the physical area as well as the people within it. Strong management should prevent over-visitation and it should prevent over-tourism. Good management should promote responsible behaviour amongst tourists. This could include the implementation of various interventions such as limiting tourist numbers at a given time or blocking off certain areas or providing educational materials. Ecotourism will often offer site-sensitive accommodation. There are many different types of accommodation that can be offered within ecotourism destinations, not just eco-lodges. In order to adhere to the principles of ecotourism, any accommodation that is associated with ecotourism should be site-sensitive. This means that it is not wasteful of local resources and it is not destructive to the environment. The accommodation should also provide ample opportunity for learning about the environment and for sensitive cultural exchange within local communities. 
Ecotourism should provide first-hand experiences. Ecotourism will typically facilitate first-hand experiences with nature. This comes in many different shapes and forms, from staying in an eco-lodge in the jungle, to bird-watching, to working in turtle conservation in Costa Rica. First-hand experiences help people to learn easier, and education, as I said before, is a core principle of ecotourism. Ecotourism should demonstrate sustainable tourism practices. As I mentioned before, ecotourism is a type of sustainable tourism. As such, ecotourism should demonstrate a commitment to the three pillars of sustainable tourism. It should be environmentally friendly, friendly to society, and kind and beneficial to the economy. Ecotourism should integrate the tourism industry into the wider planning that takes place. Tourism planning is really important and ecotourism should demonstrate a strong planning process that involves all stakeholders of the tourism industry. Tourism development should be integrated into national and local strategic planning frameworks. These frameworks should undertake environmental impact assessments as well as other sustainability assessments as part of the planning process. And ecotourism should always support the local community and the local economy. Economic leakage in tourism, when money escapes out of the local area through foreign ownership and currency exchange, etc., should always be avoided. Activities should take economic impacts into account whilst continuing to ensure environmental conservation. Economic benefits should be aimed towards the local economy and the local community, maximising the benefits to the hosts of the tourism industry. Ecotourism should always involve working with stakeholders. In order for ecotourism to be sustainable, it requires commitment by all tourism stakeholders. This includes members of the local community, staff, the tourists themselves, and different levels of government. And successful ecotourism will almost always involve some level of research. Research is such a powerful tool and ecotourism destinations should facilitate ongoing research. This will enable the best management strategies to be adopted in the destination and elsewhere. We all know we need to do better in this world. We need to take better care of this world. But people also have an inherent desire to travel and to explore. So it is imperative that we travel in a sustainable way to preserve these this beautiful world and these opportunities for future generations. If you are an eco-tourist, let me know. Where do you like to go? Where would you recommend? I would love some inspiration. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have made it right to the end, please do subscribe. And I'm sure you will love this video next.